Hi there. My name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade 9 students who are preparing for the EQAO and looking at some practice questions. And it's based on some practice questions I handed out in a package in class. It's video number 5, question number 5. This is the question. It says a boat is traveling from point C to point D which is on the shoreline. So point D is on the shoreline. I guess the shore is the dark part and the unshaded is the water. So a boat is traveling along this path towards the shore. The shore is represented by this line. Emphasize it. The shore is represented by this line, which passes through points A and B. And what it says is determine whether the path from C to D is perpendicular to the shoreline. So it's sort of a, you know, basically all the question is saying is that if you consider the line that goes between C and D, and if you consider the line that goes from A to B, are those two lines perpendicular? So we don't have to worry about the boat and the shoreline and all that. We just have to do some math here. So how do we know if two lines are perpendicular? And if you watched my last video, I just discussed this, but let's review. Um, if two lines are perpendicular, then that means we know something about their slopes. If two lines are perpendicular, their slopes are what we call negative reciprocals of each other. So what that means is that when you look at one slope, the other slope will be negative. Now, what that means is it'll be the opposite polarity. Um, because if one is positive, then the other one would be negative. And if one is negative, and you make it more negative, well, two negatives would make that a positive. So two slopes are negative reciprocals, so that means one of them is positive and one of them is negative. And reciprocals has to do with fractions. A reciprocal is the flip of a fraction, which is a really shortcut for saying that you do one over and fancy fraction stuff, but it's fine to just flip the fraction. So what's most important at the moment is that this is a question about looking for perpendicularity, which means we're looking for slopes. So I need to talk about the slope of one line and the slope of the other line. And so let's just go ahead and do that math. So I'm going to find the slope of both of my lines. And there's a couple ways of doing that. We could kind of count, rise, and run. Um, but I much prefer sort of a more algebraic approach which is I'm going to use the formula for slope. So we have a line, and the line passes through AB. So let's find the slope of that line. So I'm going to use the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Um, so let's call this point 1 and point 2. So here's y2, and here's y1. So I would need negative 5 and 7. And then the bottom of the fraction is the x's. So here's x2 and here's x1. So x2 minus x1. So again, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And as always, I say take a breath and double check. Do these two come from the same point? And is the y on top? Good. Do these two come from the same point? And is the y on top? Good. And I subtract. So I'm ready to do that math. So I have negative 5 minus 7. That's negative 12. 8 minus 0 is 8. And we always reduce fractions, even when they're slope, or maybe even especially when they're slope. Just reduce your fractions. So negative 12 over 8, I can divide both by 4. So that gives me negative 3 over 2. And I'm going to call this this. So I'm saying slope. And I'm putting a little AB to remind myself that it's the slope of line AB. So that's the slope of line AB. And now I want to talk about the slope of line CD. So let me clean up my workspace. So line CD. So here's C and here's D. So I'll call this point 1 and I'll call this point 2. And so again, we'll use the slope formula. Slope of line CD equals, so slope not equals, I can't use too many equals, so we'll use colon. So slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I defined 
this to be my second point. So y2 and y1. So negative 2 and negative 8. And then x2 minus x1. So x2 minus x1. And let's pause and double check. Do these two come from the same point? Yes. And is the y value on top? Yes. Do these two come from the same point? Yes. And is the y value on top? Yes. And I've got minus sign, so I'm ready to do the math. Okay. Okay, there it is. So let's do the math. There we go. So I've got negative 2 minus negative 8. So don't forget, minus a negative actually means plus. So I have negative 2 plus 8, which is positive 6. And same thing down here. I've got 6 minus negative 3, which is really 6 plus 3. 6 plus 3 is 9. Um, and of course, as always, reduce fractions. I can divide by 3, both the numerator and denominator, so I would end up with 2 over 3. And I'm going to call this the slope of line CD. So now I have the slope of line AB and the slope of line CD. And the question is, are they perpendicular? So we've already talked that perpendicular means that they're negative reciprocals. So let's check. Is one of them positive and one of them negative? Yes. If I ignore that for a second and look just at the values, is one of them the flipped fraction of the other? Yes. So, um, yes, they are perpendicular. So AB, the line AB, that sort of means line AB, don't worry. And line CD, which is actually a line segment, don't worry about that, are perpendicular. Hey, look, the symbol for perpendicular. Um, why? Their slopes are negative reciprocals. Now, hold on a sec. Um, if two values are negative reciprocals, it means that they must multiply to give one. So negative reciprocals will always multiply to give one. So if I take the first slope and I multiply it with the second slope, if I get one, then I know they're negative reciprocals. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. 2 times 3 is 6. And that's negative 1. So therefore, they're perpendicular. So that's another way of kind of thinking about perpendicular. Two values represent perpendicular slopes. If you multiply them together to get negative 1. So didn't have to do quite all of this. But again, you're here to learn and I'm here to teach. So yay. All right, that's that video. Uh, I think there's still another couple questions to go. I'll see you there.